Hey. I just got to bring you this video and turn you on to a guy who's clearly been spoken to by the same spirit that spoke to me. And still speaks to me. His name is Derek Bros. His YouTube site is called Rightly Divided. And I think previously it was called Global Witness. And he still goes by Global Witness. But I think his YouTube site actually used to be called Global Witness. And I saw him before I went on my trip to Missouri. But only like one video of his. And then recently I looked on someone else's uh, list of websites or YouTube sites that they like and I found him again and I've listened to 10 or 12 videos of his most of which are like 20 minutes long a couple of them are a couple hours long and every single one of his videos is relaying the same message or at least pieces of the same message that I received the difference between him and I is he has 40 years of studying the scripture but he tells people that say, I'm not really in uh, scripture, I'm not well versed in scripture. He said, don't worry, because after 40 years of studying the Bible, I still didn't have any of the concepts that have occurred to me since I had my awakening. And, much like me, he embraces the antichrist that he will be labeled with. And much like me, he says, Christ is in you, Christ is in me. Just like when I was out on my way out to Missouri, he said, Jeffrey Christ, pleased to meet you. I'm sure he would have no problem calling himself Derek Christ. <clears throat> Almost every single point, talking point, that came through in my messages that I've been relaying to this YouTube channel for the last couple months, two, three months, have been in one video or another of his. And if you watch his videos... In each and every one, if you remember some of the message that I've relayed through this channel, you'll realize he is relaying the same message. There's a couple of points that we may differ on, and that's fine. I'm, I'm willing to change my opinion. I am like a child, curious about everything, certain about nothing. But what I am certain about is that God spoke to me. It's just a matter of which God, if you're afraid it's the wrong God, but there is no doubt, God spoke through me and still speaks to me. And upon occasion... I may feel so inspired to relay his words again in the way that I once did. But on my way out to Missouri, I was speaking in the third person. As in, from the first person, I was referring to Jeff <clears throat> as a third person. When I was saying things like, Jeff has put himself at great risk and exposed himself to do these things. When I was referring to myself in third person, as if... I was speaking in the voice of God from the first person. The things I said have still been continuing to, as I've said before, revelation. And then after that you get confirmation. But only after you do the middle part, which is having faith in the revelation you received. And thereafter, once you've shown faith and taken action, you'll get confirmation that that was revelation you were receiving. And not just your own imagination. <clears throat> So I'll just go over some of the points that I've noticed this guy's been making that are like point for point for point, things that I've been saying. And like I said, it's not me that said them. They came through me, okay? The only question is, which God is it? And most people that are, you know, afraid, like I've said, if you're, don't be afraid to get in the spiritual arena because if you're not, you're already as far down the wrong road as you could possibly be. The church of no church is the church of which you are a devotee and devout follower. And even most people that call themselves Christians realize something's going on now. And if they are a Christian, they're so lukewarm and uncertain in what it is they think they believe or used to just pay lip service to that they better get something solid underneath them real quick. Or they're going to be just like everyone else, dumbfounded and at a loss. <clears throat> because every day for me is exciting. I used to not want to be here. I almost checked out. And I have a feeling the same was true for Derek. That's one of the points he said in one of his videos. The only reason he's still here is for you. I said those exact words. 
But now, for me, every day is a beautiful experience. I just watched the most amazing sunset. And I'm glad I didn't film it, but it had the coolest colors, I mean, I have ever seen. And they were just so many various different colors all within the same field of view. And then when you look around the sky 360, it's just like technicolor. I used to not want to be here, but now that I've developed this relationship with God, like I said, Derek has 40 years of researching the Bible. I simply prayed with all earnesty to Jesus Christ once, and my life changed thereafter. So him and I have the same message, but we might be able to reach different people. He can reach people who were devout Christians that are well-versed in the Bible that need to learn that everything they think they thought they knew needs to be turned right upside down on its head. And I might be more relatable to people that have never been into church or religion or anything other than basic spirituality. And when I learned in sociology and human development that it is more important to develop a personally meaningful code of conduct and morals and ethics than to subscribe to some uh, uh, institutionalized, structured form of morals and ethics, which are dogma and indoctrination, that seems to have served me well enough that you don't need to be well-versed in the Bible. And in fact, like I've said, those that are well-versed in the Bible are going to have the hardest time going through this and being able to grasp the magnitude and the reality of what's happening more and more every day. And that's why it's a good experience for me every day. Every day, it's like a whole new level. And then a whole new level the next day. And for most people, I suspect it's probably terrifying. So much that they got to narrow their field of view a little more every day to not see the stuff that's going on at an increasing rate. That is so outside our world view that if you don't have something to give you a sense of security and reassurance, it's got to feel pretty intimidating, even terrifying. That's one of the things I heard him say in his video today, that great and terrifying day upon his return. Because it will be both great and terrible. But without trying to quote him, what I'm saying is he has definitely been spoken to by the same spirit. And it seems like it's been about five months since he's uploaded a video. He may be done. He may be done with that phase in his life. About the only thing I've heard him say that might contradict or be slightly at odds with what I've been saying is he, he talked about the Elohim, the gods of old, as if that's not Christ. I suspect it's just a matter of time before I click on his video where he refers to the serpents and the dragons in the same context that I do. As in, they've not been the bad guys. Everything you think you thought you knew was reversed. So you need to take everything you thought you learned and thought you knew or at least paid lip service to, flip it 180 degrees and you'd be a lot closer to the truth. <clears throat> and therefore people say he's a Luciferian. He's like, I don't know nothing about Luciferianism. Like, only time I even looked into it is after people started telling me I'm a Luciferian. So, God spoke to me. It's just a matter of which God, for those who believe, you know, oh, and maybe it's the devil. And I would say pay attention to function over form. Because a lot of people say, oh, Jesus' name isn't Jesus, it's, it's Yeshua. And, and God's name, the devil's name is Godriel. So you've actually been praying to the devil by saying God, it's short for Godriel. That's all form. Eastern tradition and religions pay more attention to the function than the form. It's like the word principles before personalities. So don't be worried about, oh, I slipped up and I was praying to the wrong one and I, I said the wrong name. Magic using sigils and invocations and incantations are reliant upon your intentions. It is your intentions and your emotion that puts the power into it. So if you accidentally got tricked into using the wrong word uh, and you're afraid of getting into spirituality because uh, the, the double think and the black white and the black and white checkerboard of the of the dynamic of the duality of all of this, so it's hard to know which is up and down because... They seem to be interchangeable. Don't worry about that. Get right with your intentions and pray to the God who knows your heart and let him know and be honest who you are because he already knows who you are. 
this Derek Burroughs guy, he has a butterfly on his Bible. And in one of his videos, he refers to this butterfly and says, a lot of you guys might be apprehensive about this symbol and this image and uh, have associated it with some government programs. That's all he says. But clearly, he's referring to MK Ultra. He says, but the butterfly is a symbol of eternal life in the Native American traditions. And that transformation between a, from a worm into the beauty of a butterfly is what it symbolizes, eternal life, and that transformation. Other people see the butterfly thing, oh, he's MK Ultra. he's into that CIA mind control stuff. Laurel Canyon, where a lot of those musicians came from, like Jim Morrison, and I was singing his songs, on the way out to Missouri, he has the butterfly on his shoulder and the serpent on his glasses, on the bridge of his glasses, across the nose. And he sings, Can you picture what will be so limitless and free, desperately in need of some stranger's hand in a desperate land? Those strangers are here, and you are going to be in need of their hand. And I suggest you reach out. Because, if you are to believe in all of this, or even part of it or some of it, here's a truth that occurred to me today. This is a spiritual battle. And if you learn to love the devil, learn to love Satan, learn to love the reptilians, and when I went out to Missouri, I didn't know where I was going or what I was going to face. But whether it was an underground base of reptilians, or a blood sacrifice by the Freemasons, or whatever I was going to find when I got there, I was going. And I was going to face those fears. I didn't even know I was going to Independence, Missouri until halfway there. When I left Utah, the only thing I knew is I was going to a border between Kansas City, Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri, where I had delivered truckloads of refrigerated food to these underground installations that can hold hundreds of semis. And the one that I was specifically referring to had spikes anyway. So the reversal of symbols and meanings and names, don't worry about that. God knows your heart, and if you pray to the good God that you want to be part of, and to create a world the likes of which that you want to participate in, that's the God that will answer. Laurel Canyon, out of Laurel Canyon came a lot of these musicians like Joni Mitchell. Don't interrupt the sorrow. By the way, that song by Jim Morrison that I was just singing is from This Is The End of Our Elaborate Plans, My Friend. And sure, something may have happened there. CIA mind control, he had the butterfly here, and that's part of the MK Ultra Monarch program, and you get carried away and sucked into that. Quantum of Consciences latest video upload says that he's not going to see the chemtrails and think, oh my god, they're poisoning us anymore. As far as he knows, they're spraying flour out the back of those, knowing that we truth seekers will catch on to it, embed our own negative connotation with it, see it as some sort of a bad thing, and from there we create that world. If the reptilians feed on your negative emotion, then learning to love them and not fear them and hate them and think you got to fight against them uh, uh, usurps their power. Takes the rug right out from under them. That is a paradox that is hard to get around and not run back into. You're afraid these serpents... Oh, and that's the other thing. John X Army... He's having the same visions. He's hearing from the same spirit. He had a lady on his YouTube channel that talks about the reptilians and these Naga serpents. As in the Nakash. Same thing. Naga, Nakash. It is the fear And the upside down reversal of all the meanings that we've been indoctrinated into, unless you are to believe this world as it is, is controlled by God, it's... I'm not going to try and get into the convincing mode. 
I'm just going to say what I have come to see. And the things that I know and think and believe are all very fluid. But that one thing that I stated, stated, God spoke through me, God speaks to me. My understanding of things are not still crystal clear, but as I said on my way out to Missouri, God can take that hodgepodge of data points that you've been collecting as a truth seeker, rearrange them into a picture that makes some sense. And that's the picture that I've come to see. And every day for me is an exciting new journey. More and more every day because the escalating number and frequency and severity of the changes that we're going through is more and more reassurance to me that I got God and God's got me. Death doesn't matter. And so every day is a little bit more fun than the last. To where for other people, every day is a little more terrifying and they have to narrow their field of view and close that aperture of what they focus on because everything's getting so weird. <laughs> and so this guy, uh, Global Witness, has clearly spoken to the same God and or, or, or hears from the same God that I have. So whether you've studied the Bible 40 years, <clears throat> or you're like me, and you were always a good person, had your personally meaningful and relevant set of morals and principles and ethics that you tried to uphold, and use your own logic and reason to try to contribute to and create a better place and a world the likes of which you personally would want to live in and participate, and like Greg Allman says, I'm no angel. But apparently, eligibility has been extended to people like me. And even people that thought they were angels and were going by the Bible, those are the most deceived. Narrow is the path. You remember me hearing, hearing me say that a few times? That's what Derek says. And he speaks that same truth that most Christians will say, Oh no, that's blasphemy. There was only one Son of God and His name was Jesus. And you're not a Son of God. What? Wait a minute, that's uh, pretty... It's the hypocritical double think. I thought you said we're all God's children. Well, yeah, but he only had one begotten son. It says right here in the Bible. If you cannot apply a reason and logic to your own thinking, so much as to acknowledge that if we're the children of God, then he didn't have just one begotten son. Well, yeah, it was Jesus and uh, blah, blah, blah. You're never going to be able to make it to the point where Satan was the serpent in the garden. Jesus was his brother. Therefore, Jesus was a serpent. And if they were both God's children, God's a serpent. And thus, so are all of we. Derek Burroughs talks about reason. And being able to bring reason to your faith. But he also talks about losing your mind. He says, you need to lose your mind in order to grasp on what's going on here. Being attached to all your preconceived ideas isn't going to get you through that narrow gate. Every one of his videos I've watched so far has one or more of the talking points that I have been receiving and relaying through this YouTube channel since I had my awakening. I started the YouTube channel when the fires happened, which was shortly after I had discovered my microchip, which was what shattered my reality and attachment to this world and put me through a transformative process, like the worm to the butterfly. And it's probably something like that transformative process that is referred to by that butterfly. A lot of these things that we've been given negative connotations on the Freemasons, the CIA, MK Ultra, the Reptilians, everything that you think you thought you knew, you probably need to flip it upside down because like Global Witness says, it says in the Bible, those things of God, they detest, and those things that, those things that God upholds, they detest and want to bring low. And those things that they Hold upon high, God detests. They being the people that have created the world that we live in. And so, 
you'll see on his videos, it says, is Christ within you? Could you be him? Like at the intro of, of quite a few of his videos. That's one of the biggest pieces of blasphemy that most people can't get around. No, I couldn't be Christ. You will judge yourself, he says. God said he's, he judges no one. He leaves that for the Son. That's you. And you judge yourself. And remember me saying on my way out to Missouri that you must have an inferiority complex. I would have to have an inferiority complex to not believe I've been contacted by God. And you, as someone who got to witness this, would also have to have an inferiority complex to not recognize that you have second-hand access to someone who heard from God. And that means you, if a wretch like me, can be saved, so can you. The only thing that will stop you is your fear. Well, I don't know if you're saved or deceived. Narrow is the path, and the 90% of lukewarm Christians who allow this world to continue the way it has are not getting through. I've told you one of the reasons I've been chosen. I did what I could with what I had. When I went to the FBI Cyber Squad Division and saw Sonia Sorensen and Paula Houston, the Pornography's and Obscenity's States Ombudsman, <clears throat> and rode down the street with a TV and a VCR strapped to my back on my mountain bike, because that's all I had at the time. A mountain bike and a TV and my will. And I went down there and I saw the lead of Baca, a local Baca chapter. And he took me in a courtroom that's right there adjoining the library where, where we agreed to meet. And he had a 22 on his belt made by North American Arms. And I recognized it as soon as I rolled up and said, oh, nice gun. I used to make those down at North American Arms. Because I was there to show him about the pedophile calling cards that are on all of the sandals vacation resort packages with single frames of children's spread eagle slipped in. <clears throat> Along with other things that I saw, and when him and his buddy were looking at the TV that I brought along with the VCR and the tape that I already had pre-recorded with slow-mo and pause, so I didn't have slow-mo and pause, I just put it in and push play, and I had already done the slow-mo and pause and recorded it. He said, I have meetings with the AG, the Attorney General, and some other high flute and attorney, the whatever. But this would be my last if I take this into them. That was 20 years ago. Now that Jeffrey Epstein and Pedophile Island and Lolita Express have become known, I was just a little bit ahead of my time. Now people could recognize those sandals vacation all-inclusive and we fulfill the most exquisite of appetites and recognize that those are calling cards. Those are business cards. My point is, I did what I could with what I had to make the world a better place. And I've continued to do that. Though I falter, though I'm just a human. <clears throat> I didn't have to be versed in scripture. Or pay lip service to some god. As it says in Romans 10, 11, 12, I have saved for myself 70,000 who have not bowed a knee to Baal. I have grafted those from the wild olive tree, I have grafted those branches into my tree. Because for a long time, I have held out my hand to a disobedient people that is Israel. And then he says, but don't get too egotistical. Because just like I broke off some of those branches that are Israel to make room for the wild olive branches that I will graft in, that are the elect who have not bowed a knee to Baal, so I will break you off if you don't keep your nose clean and do right. So recognize this as the severity of God and the benevolence of God. The benevolence of God willing to graft you in, and the severity of God willing to break them off. But that's how real this is. The Spirit speaks to people, and more and more people every day are receiving the message. So don't sit on the sidelines and think, well, I'm not a spiritual person, and it's so convoluted and confusing, I'm afraid to get involved, because like you said, there's double meanings. Because we know sometimes words have two meanings. That's Stairway to Heaven by the Eagles. These musicians tapped into something. If you're afraid of it, and all those musicians coming out of Laurel Canyon were indoctrinated by the CIA Mind Control Monarch Program MK Ultra, and they were actually creating Satan's work, 
and I don't know what to tell you. Other than you need to let go of those fears because those have all been ingrained into you. We only have two natural fears. That's falling and loud noises. Everything else has been programmed into you. God is real. God is here. God is now. And this Global Witness, Rightly Divided YouTube channel, Derek Burroughs, has been spoken to by the same God that I've been spoken to. And he speaks with 40 years of scriptural knowledge behind him that he had to flip on its head, turn upside down, look at it from the other side and realize how deceived he had been. He speaks of the divine feminine that has been smothered out, smeared, and undermined. There's even one part where he quotes, it might be from one of, the, one of the scriptures of the Gnostic Gospels that wasn't included in the canonized biblical texts. Like the Gospel of Thomas or something. Where it says, Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, and someone else says, how could a woman be impregnated by a woman? That means the Holy Spirit is a woman. Oh no, you can't have any goddess worship. That makes you a, pa a pagan, wicked, evil uh, uh, sun worshiper and a new age uh, deceived by Satan, spirit of the Antichrist, Lucifer. You hear all that dogma jam-packed into one sentence? And I don't even know the stuff. But that's how readily available it is right on the tip of my tongue because I've heard all the, all the warning signs. Turn back. Go away now. Don't go any further down that road. Oh no, you're going to go to hell. God can't be a woman, neither can the Holy Spirit. You're going to hell. Let that shit go. Because there is something so real going on now that even, like I said, even from the atheist and the agnostic, right up to the Christian who's paid lip service and even knows those scriptures pretty well, knows that if you've been paying lip worm lukewarm lip service to something you're not really devoted to or certain of you're certain of the things you see happening around us right now you better get just as certain about the God who you have a spiritual bond with and a connection to and have developed a relationship with or it's going to get pretty scary and every new ad development in our world is not going to be reassurance for you that this is going to be fun it's going to be terrifying for you because you don't know what the hell to expect. Change is one of the greatest fears of what we are afraid of. We're all afraid of change. There's so much change going on right now that if you don't have something to hold on to, everything else in your world is going to dissolve. The spirit that speaks to me is ahead of that curve. I have no worries. I have no fears. Death? No. Life? No. The need for material things and material wealth? No. And that's what I said about estranged parents don't want to shower their children with gifts because it could create resentment. Likewise, when a boy and girl get together, if he just starts buying her a bunch of stuff and giving her all these material wealth He's not sure afterwards whether she loves him or all the stuff he buys for her. God can provide everything you need and shower you with all the material wealth or assets, food, shelter, water, whatever you need. But if he were to do that, then it wouldn't be certain whether or not you fell in love with God or all the stuff he gave you. So... I just thought I'd share this with you, this new channel that I found. That's actually a channel I came across and breezed over before I went to Missouri. And then I actually looked for it again when I came back and I couldn't find it probably because it changed names. But one of his previous videos that I saw is where he brought the guy who says there's a spaceship hovering above the earth. Is the leader of the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan. He said he brought Louis Farrakhan into a Christian church, and when he first brought him in, all the Christians were snarling and looking at each other. This ain't our guy. Uh, uh. And by the end, they were listening to Louis Farrakhan saying, teach us, brother. Teach us. Because they could, they could feel the truth in what he was saying. 
If you're a truth seeker, there is an explosion of truth going on all around us. People are like volcanoes suddenly going active. Don't know what the hell to make of it or where it came from or where they got it or what tapped into them that's feeding this truth into them. There's a lot of people from John X Army to me to this global witness, Derek Bros, and a lot of other people that are suddenly having the awakening going, whoa. But there is some commonalities to the awakening process. A crisis point in your life is one of them. A lot of people come to know, become a truther. I heard, I heard Quantum of Conscience say that a lot of people became truthers during when they were jobless, in between jobs. Unemployed, that's the word he used. That's a very small crisis compared to the one I experienced along with the plasma fires that I could see that no one else seems to be able to that cracked my world wide open and allowed for the new world to come in. And that's what Derek Burroughs speaks of, dying to this world. Once you die to this world, then you can have the next world. All of your attachment to the outcome of the investigation is going to keep you from being able to see the truth that's happening all around us if you're still attached to this world and your preconceived ideas. That can't be true, because if that were true, then blah, 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 fill in the blank. Your attachment to the outcome of whether or not that's true is going to prevent you from being able to see the truth. So all I'm saying, let go and let God, because God's real. And if you ask Him, He'll speak to you. I'm no one special. And I know lots of people are receiving the calling. I received the calling and dropped everything. And I think, I know Derek Bro says something to that effect. I forget how he worded it. It's basically what I referred to in the love letter. The Romeo test. Where she says, oh no, help me. And seeing whether or not you're willing to drop everything and go. When you receive the call, I received the call. A mission calling that Mormons get from their bishop, I received directly from the Holy Spirit. Watch some of the video links in the description below. And you'll see the same story I told, told through another person. Remember when I said, fuck what you heard, join us witches. Join this Antichrist. Or be afraid to. And be held back and entrapped in the prison of those fears that you have attached to those words. Remember me singing that song? Hope you guessed my name. Just call me Lucifer. You can make a song saying that, but if you say, just call me Jeffrey Christ. Ooh, that guy's bad. But the other song, oh, I hope you guessed my name. I'm a man of wealth and taste. Woo, woo. The world you've been encapsulated in is so backwards you need to